Hey guys, I'm John Setzler with Atlanta Grill Company and today I'd like to take a little time to introduce you to the new Masterbuilt Gravity Series 1050 Grill and Smoker that Atlanta Grill Company is going to be carrying. I want to show you what this guy's all about and how nicely it works, so let's have a look. On the left side of this grill, you have the guts that I want to call it that make this grill work. You have the vertical charcoal chamber here and the ash pan below. Underneath here and behind this panel, you have a computer controlled fan that provides air to the system to keep this thing burning. To load this system up with charcoal, you just pop the latch and open this up. You've got the charcoal chute here. This is a vertical chamber that holds a good bit of charcoal and you can use hardwood lump charcoal or briquettes in this system. On the lower side we have the ash pan and this door just opens up the removable ash pan slides out so you can empty ash. Here we have the charcoal grate and we have a slot here that you use to put your fire starter in. You light your fire starter, slide it in there and it lights your vertical column of charcoal from the bottom. And the reason this is called a gravity fed system is because gravity causes the charcoal to fall down this chute. It burns right here on the charcoal grate and then the ash falls into the ash pan. The fan that's running behind here that's computer controlled controls how intensely this fire burns and how hot it gets inside of the charcoal chamber and this system is capable in my testing of running at temperatures anywhere between about 150 or 160 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And when you're ready to start this system there are two baffles that need to be pulled out. The first baffle allows airflow into the charcoal chamber from the fan and the second one allows that air to return into the cooking chamber. So actually it come, the fan comes in, the fan air comes in through the lower vent and it escapes into the cooking chamber through here. So the air comes in and in essence you're pressurizing the charcoal chamber and the air is escaping the charcoal chamber at the bottom. So that's why this has to be burned with the top of the charcoal chamber closed. It forces all that hot air into the cooking chamber. And operating this system is as simple as loading your charcoal chamber, putting that fire starter in there, and then turning the computer on. And once the computer's on, you press the temperature button, you turn the dial to wherever you want your temperature, and you press that again. And as soon as you do that, the fan starts running, and the grill starts warming up to your set temperature. And inside this grill, underneath where the grill grates reside, you have the manifold. This is where the heat comes from the vertical charcoal chamber. It comes out right here and it distributes through this manifold. And there's holes here on the front and the back that allow that heat to rise up into the cooking chamber. And as you can see, I have already uh, done my burn in and seasoning on this grill. And the instructions for that are in the manual. It's real simple to do. And what's most impressive about the Gravity Series 1050 is how much cooking space you've got. We've got three cooking levels here and on the lower level you have your largest cooking area with the cast iron grates that is 18 inches front to back and looks like we've got 28 inches left to right. Your middle grate system here is about 12 inches front to back and the same 28 and your top rack here is about 8 inches front to back and the same 28 inches across. With the lid closed, you have, I'm thinking, about 4 or 4 and a half inches of clearance on this top rack. So there's still plenty of room to get uh, lots of meat and food on that rack with the lid closed. The 1050 has a stainless steel folding front shelf that comes up and down. On the left side of the grill where the control system is, you have another stainless steel 
work surface here that you can use for prep or setting stuff on and you've got tool hooks over here on the left side of that on the lower side of the stand you've got a nice solid underneath table where you can keep a bag of charcoal or whatever you might want to keep under there some nice big wheels and on the controller side on the both sides of the front and the back you've got locking casters where this guy will stay where you put it underneath on the control side you have a removable grease catch pan and on the back side of the grill when the grease catch pan is removed you can take the entire grease tray out and uh, you can clean that if you want to on the back side of the table where the control panel is you have a little storage drawer where you can keep some small things if you want you can keep a lighter in there I've got a couple of fire starters in there and I've got my meat probe so now that I've shown you the grill let's uh, just go through a quick procedure of starting this up I've got a fire starter here I'm gonna give it a quick light and then I'm just gonna push it in and we're gonna let that burn for about two minutes and I'm gonna close the door and I'm also gonna close the door on the top of the charcoal chamber and like I said we're gonna let that starter burn for two minutes and while that starter is burning I'm gonna take my baffles out and we're just gonna hang those right on this hook while our starters firing up the charcoal and after that fire starter has been burning for a couple of minutes we're gonna turn the grill on I'm gonna flip over here to the temperature side we'll hit temperature and let's just set it to run at 250 and it will immediately start up you can you probably can't hear the fan kick on there but the fan has kicked on so we're gonna time this and see how long it takes it to get to 250 degrees after about two minutes we're up to 105 and after about four minutes we're up to right at about 140 and after six minutes here we're up to 227 uh, 228 and right at the eight minute mark uh, we're at 248 we're approaching right at 250 degrees so that's eight minutes from the time I started the computer and started the fan running plus the two minutes that I let uh, the starter burn in there to get the charcoal lit before I started the fan so we're looking at 10 minutes uh, to get to 250 degrees that's pretty quick uh, your results here may vary based on what kind of charcoal you're using uh, I just happen to have some briquette charcoal in there and I believe hardwood lump charcoal will heat up even quicker than that so you, you'll see some variation in that and when this guy gets to temp the computer holds it there rock solid you'll see that this thing just won't vary more than a few degrees over or under your set temp and inside this grill the pit temperature is measured right here there the thermometer for the grill is underneath that grill rack and it does a perfect job of reading the temperature inside the system once your grills up and running if you want to add some extra smoke one of the things you can do is open up your ash pan toss a couple of wood chunks right in the ash pan and as the hot pieces of charcoal that break apart fall down in there they will create a bunch of beautiful smoke from those wood chunks you can also mix wood chunks in intermittently with your charcoal in the vertical chamber when this grill is up and running there are three kill switches in this system that automatically shut the fan down when you open the main cooking chamber you'll notice that there's a switch right here when that switch is not pressed with the lid being closed it shuts the fan off in the system the second kill switch is up here on the charcoal chamber when you open this there's a kill switch here you do not want to run this system for any length of time at all with this open or you'll have a really big fire going in your charcoal chamber before you know it and the third kill switch is down here in the ash pan the switch is right down here in the bottom corner so when that door is open the fan is not going to be running either and there's one other brief thing I want to tell you if you ever fire up your grill and it just doesn't want to get hot the temperature doesn't move have a look and make sure you've taken these out if these are not taken out your grill won't heat up and don't ask me how I know that 
once you have everything up and running uh, you can connect your smoker to Wi-Fi uh, you want to download the app to your phone and follow the instructions for setting this guy up get it connected to Wi-Fi and then you can take control of it uh, from your uh, wireless device and you can see my smoker still running at 250 if I want to change the temp I can uh, come in here and let's tell it I want to run at 275 and set the temperature you'll notice that it uh, changed my set temperature here to 275 and I heard the fan kick in and it will very quickly come to temperature it doesn't take this thing long at all to bring the temperature up so it comes up that digital temperature probe in there reads fairly quickly if I want to set a timer on the device which is another thing you can do from the front control panel you can also do it from here you can set a timer to run anywhere between uh, I think you can go one minute and uh, anywhere between that and 23 hours and 59 minutes and you set that timer and uh, it'll start uh, running when you touch that well you'll see it running down here it's not counting down the seconds it's only running uh, hours and minutes on that so if you're running meat probes you can swipe right and you've got four meat probes here this grill comes with one meat probe uh, and those meat probes connect to the front panel and run in through a little port right over here on the on the side of the grill uh, there's this little port here where the meat probe runs through and you can uh, put those meat probes directly in your meat and you can see uh, what each of those probes will be reading here and you can also set an alarm for those probes at this point so that's how this guy works as far as uh, controlling it with Wi-Fi it's uh, I ran into a few bumps getting uh, mine set up on the Android but I understand it's a lot simpler to do on an iOS a, a device like your Apple iPad or iPhone so you have this full functionality as well so in very basic terms I've shown you uh, how this machine works how the features are uh, the grill space you have uh, you know everything this grill's got to offer and I want to give you a little bit of my opinion on how well this grill works uh, I am very impressed with this design uh, there there are gravity fed smokers out there they've been around for a long time but they're just smokers uh, you can put uh, computerized control systems on those smokers to run them but they're still smokers that are designed to run at smoking temperatures this system right here can take you to grilling temperatures when we take that thing up to 700 and one of the videos that I'm gonna do coming up shortly is we're just gonna grill some steaks on here and I'm gonna show you exactly how well this system can do that it does a great job with steaks burgers and things that you would want to cook hot and that gives this thing in my opinion a lot of advantage over a lot of other things uh, a lot of people want to call this uh, a pellet grill killer a lot of people don't seem to be happy with the smoke profile that they get on a pellet grill this thing gives you the charcoal smoke profile that you're looking for and you can beef that up like I showed you by adding wood chunks to get additional smoke in here if you want it and you get the same level of computerized control you get with a lot of the pellet grills where you just dial in that temperature and everything goes exactly where you want it it's a uh, very easy to operate this is a uh, really a game changer in that aspect so stick around follow along we're going to be cooking some on this and we'll get to show you a lot more until next time it's john setzel with atlantic grill company